Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I am planning to try to do something excruciatingly difficult for clergy and keep my messages to you this summer under five minutes. There are two things that come to mind this Father's Day that I think are important to share with you. The first is that as we strive to change the big things in our world for the better, as we strive to right some horrific wrongs that have been tolerated and promoted for far too long, we need to realize that the small things matter. In fact, I would suggest to you that the greatest change begins at the family level. As we teach one another right and wrong, compassion and empathy, the power of faith and the essentials of grace in the family circle, whatever configuration that family may take. A respect for truth begins at home. A respect for others begins at home. A respect for ourselves begins at home. Each Father's Day weekend, we sing a hymn at St. John's that I don't think many of you probably know. It is found in the back of a hymnal that we purchased for use during worship at St. John's way back in 1985. The hymnals were provided in loving memory of Peter Evelines. That hymnal has been out of print for a very long time, so we keep repairing the ones that we have. The hymn I want to share with you is entitled, A Christian Home. This is verse 3. Oh, give us homes where Christ is Lord and Master, the Bible read, the precious hymns still sung. Where prayer comes first, in peace or in disaster, and praise is natural speech to every tongue. Where mountains move before a faith that's vaster, and Christ sufficient is for young and old. Other verses of the hymn speak of homes as safe places where there are bonds of love that no enemy can sever, a calm and courage that trouble cannot dim, a place where each finds joy in serving others, a love that shines though days be dark and grim. I do not know where all the heroes among us right now learned how to be so brave, so loving, so committed to the welfare of others, but I suspect for most it began at home, and hopefully it was reinforced by the church. The second thing I want to share with you is the surprising prediction that as a result of this pandemic, the long-term decline in church participation may reverse itself. Instead of waiting for more and more people to enter our buildings and walk through our doors, the church has been forced to find ways to reach out to others with a message of hope and faith that has been rediscovered by many who thought the church had nothing meaningful or useful to share with them. Many people who just could not see themselves walking through the doors of a church have heard a message about truth and justice and goodness and compassion from the online church that has touched them deeply. Many have come to realize there has always been common ground for them with the church in matters that concern them the most. I pray that revival will happen for the good of each individual, each family, the common good of our communities, our society, our nation, and our world. As the old saying goes, home is where the heart is. And when we reach hearts, one at a time, with the right message at home and in our church homes, then all things are possible. Shine with God. Hallelujah. Amen.